Hello there. It's time for another biology lesson. And today we'll be looking at the topic organization of life. Now the objective of this lesson is to help learners describe the levels of organization of life. To state examples of each level of organization of life. To describe the complexity of organisms. State the advantages and disadvantages of complexity in higher organisms. Now moving along, we'll be looking at the topic organization of life. Now living things are highly organized and structured, following a hierarchy that can be examined on a scale from small to large. All life starts with the cell. For some species, it ends with the cell. But for others, the cells come together to form tissues, tissues form organs, organs form organ systems, and organ systems combine to form an organism. Therefore, organization of life is the existence of life from a single-celled organism to a multicellular organism with complex forms that perform different functions. As you can see here, in the organization of life, starting out with cell, group of similar cells will form tissue, group of similar tissues will form organs, Different organs working together will form the organ system, and all the organ systems working together will be found in an organism. Now moving along, let's look at the levels of organization of life. Now starting out with the cell. A cell is the simplest of all the levels of organization of life. A cell is defined as the smallest unit of living organisms. All living organisms are made up of cells. Some are made up of only one cell which makes them unicellular. Examples are euglena, paramecium, amoeba and so on. Others are made up of many cells. They are called multicellular organisms. Examples are hydra, man, goat and higher plants. Examples of cells in man for instance include red blood cells, the spermatozoa, the epidermal cells in the skin and so on. Moving to the next level we are going to look at the tissues. Now the tissues occupy the second level in the organization of life. A tissue is a group of similar cells in an organism which performs a particular function. Examples of tissue in higher plants are the xylem tissue, the phloem tissue, the epidermal tissue and so on. Examples of tissue in multicellular animals are muscular tissues. That is the cell that form the muscle, bone, blood, nervous tissue and so on. Some organisms exist at the tissue level of organization. Examples are hydra, spirogyra, sponges, and some fungi. Now the next level of organization are the organs. An organ is a group, an organ is a group of tissues forming a layer in an organism and performs a specific function. Examples of organs in animals include the stomach, brain, heart, liver, kidney, and so on. Examples of organs in plants are flowers, roots, stems, seeds, and so on. Now, the final one that I have here is systems. A system is a group of organs which work together to perform specific function. Example, the shoot and the root system in plants. Digestive, reproduction, skeletal systems in animals. Now, moving along. You can see this is the pictorial representation of the level of organization of life. But here we have the comprehensive levels of organization of life. Now starting, you know, I told you earlier in the previous slide that cell is the basic unit of life. So all life starts out from cell. And the level of, of organization that we discussed in the last slide was from cell to the organism. But here we have the comprehensive level of organization of life starting from the atom. So from the atom, uh, which is the smallest uh, part of an element, various atoms will combine together to form a molecule. And different molecules will come together to form the cell organelles. While the cell organelles, various cell organelles are found in the cell. While uh, a group of similar cells will form tissue, group of similar tissue will form organs. Different organs working together will form the organ system and the various organ systems are found in living in a particular species of living organisms. Now many organisms, many um, 
many organisms of the same species coming together to live in a particular place will form the population. Now the ecosystem consists of both the living and the non-living factors that we find in our environment that makes up the ecosystem here. But here we have the community. Before the ecosystem we have a community. A community is the um, coming together of various species of organisms that are living together in a particular environment because we have so many living things so living things of different species coming together to live in a certain environment will make up the um, a community while the ecosystem as i said earlier is made up of both the living and the non-living part of the environment now the biosphere here the the biome here though it is called bioma um, this one um, is a biome now a biome um, is a larger is a larger ecosystem now the ecosystem is like the basic unit of the environment but we have the, the larger um, environment which cons which can consist of more than one ecosystem in a particular area that is characterized by its um, the species of organism that stay there or the predominant weather condition in that area that forms the biome is a larger ecosystem now the combination of all the biomes in the world make up the biosphere the biosphere is the sum total of um, the various ecosystems in the world where organisms are found the biosphere indicates the larger area in the world where living organisms are formed so this is the comprehensive levels of organization of life though the one that we focused on was from cell to organism but this is a comprehensive um, levels of organization of life now moving on we'll be looking at the complexity of organisms we'll be looking at the complexity of organisms there's an increase in complexity from unicellular organisms to multicellular organisms now this increase in complexity involves increase in structure function activity behavior and mode of life for instance, unicellular organisms can perform all functions which are essential to life because they have specialized organelles which enable them to carry out these functions. But they cannot carry them out efficiently because each function requires a different type of cellular organization. Unicellular organisms are also restricted to an aquatic environment because they cannot develop features that will help them to adapt to other environments. That is, they have a simple mode of life but in the case of multicellular organisms they have many cells which are specialized for particular functions leading to functional efficiency and ability to adapt to wide variety of habitats so here are the examples of unicellular organisms and multicellular organisms the examples here for unicellular organisms are bacteria paramecium amoeba and chlamydomonas whereas the examples of multicellular organisms that we have here is the octopus and the petromyzone. Now moving along, we'll be looking at the advantages of complexity in higher organisms. Now, there is cellular differentiation, that is, cells are differentiated to form tissues that carry out a particular function. It leads to internal structural specialization. Cellular differentiation leads to internal structural specialization, whereby different organs carry out different function that's what we mean by internal spe structural specialization there is a mutual interdependence between component cells this is a result of division of labor among component cells just like we have the nerve cell that carry out a specific function we have the blood cell which carry out a specific function we have um, the sex cell the gametes which carry out a specific function and all these cells are working together they are interdependent on one another to keep the organism alive now there is efficiency because of the division of labor yes division of labor leads to efficiency complexity allows increase in the size of organisms because there are spaces between cell for growth complexity makes higher organisms to become more resistant to adverse conditions within the environment now let's take a look at the disadvantages of complexity in higher organisms Complex organisms have small surface area to volume ratio 
Therefore, diffusion alone would not be sufficient to meet their metabolic needs. So, di diffusion is not is not sufficient. There are other processes that will, will be required to allow um, the cells within the body to meet its needs. Individual cells cannot exist on their own. They depend on one another to survive. Now, damage in one organ can affect the function of another. That is, if the nerve cell cells in the eye are damaged, one may not see again. In complex organisms, life processes waste time and energy. That is, there is a slower rate of expulsion of waste product from the cell, slower rate of diffusion of oxygen to individual cells, and finally, ability to regenerate decreases with complex organisms. Many lower animal sponges and flatworms can grow back missing parts, but extremely specialized cells like the nerve cell cannot regenerate. Now this brings us to the end of our lesson for today on organization of life. Let's take a quick look at the summary. Organization of life is the existence of life from a single-celled organism to a multicellular organism with complex forms that perform different functions. Many individual organisms can be organized into the following levels. Cell, tissue, organ, system, and the whole organism. There is an increase in complexity from unicellular organisms to multicellular organisms. This increase in complexity involves increase in structure, function, activity, behavior, and mode of life. Now before we go, I want to pause this video and attempt to answer the questions in this assessment to see how much of the lessons that you have learned. And please don't forget to like and subscribe even uh, to this channel. Thank you and I'll see you again in the next lesson. Bye-bye.